Hey everybody, welcome back to Callus Crew Challenge number two. It is the round of 16. This is the first match chronologically and the first match that I will be covering on YouTube. It's a big one. This is a strong pairing. It is the Sprinkles Fan Club against Pax on Stacks. And there's obviously a bit of variance with how the tiers break, but I would say that this is a particularly important matchup for Johnny and the Sprinkles Fan Club to win. Uh, with the way that the tiers broke, it's going to be Sayuze against ABR in Oros, which, I mean, anything could happen in Mons with good players, first of all. But you've got to think that ABR has a pretty big edge in that matchup. And then the other matchup is TJ against Lax in SV, which is maybe a little closer than the Oros matchup, but you've still got to think that Lax probably has the edge there. Uh, so given that Pax on Stacks seemingly has the advantage in both of the other matchups to varying degrees, uh, it becomes crucially important that Johnny wins here for his team. This is the matchup that they probably have the best chance of winning. Uh, Johnny also did not win in the previous round, so not only does he want to win because of this matchup as it played out and with the way the tiers were distributed, uh, Johnny not only wants to win for his team because it's a very important match, but also for himself because he doesn't want to be 0-2 and letting down his teammates. So probably some pressure on him. Tony maybe doesn't feel the same amount of pressure. Uh, Tony did win his round one match against h Clout, which you guys may have also seen on the channel. But this match has big implications for the series, in my opinion. I think it would be hard-pressed, though obviously not impossible, should Johnny lose here for Sprinkles Fan Club to defeat Pax on Stacks in this matchup. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Here it is. It's a DPP best of three in the round of 16 in Callus Crew Challenge 2. Johnny's on the bottom, Tony's on the top, they both have a Zapdos. Hippowdon. In my experience with DPP, which is far from expert, obviously, uh, usually Hippowdon is a lead poke rather than in the back, so it's interesting that it's in the back in this case. Regardless, he gets rocks up and then he takes a nap as Breloom goes for its basically ubiquitous spore there's not a breloom in existence pretty much that doesn't carry a spore why are you running breloom if not for arguably the most broken move in the game you could argue that rocks are more broken but i digress here comes starmie to try to get rid of the rocks that heatran just put down and he's gonna go for surf just in case hits a lati which we see does not have lefties what it does have is a critical hit Draco Meteor, and there is no more Starmie. First knockout of the match for Tony. Here comes Heatran, and there is a Body Slam. 60% chance to find Para, doesn't find it in this case. Obvious stall team here for Johnny. A little more offensive leaning for Tony. And softboiled on the switch to Loom. Here comes Rachi, and it's just going to be superpower, 44% there. Rachi should be able to get a wish off if it has that. Alternatively, you can just start attacking, Iron Head, U-Turn, Body Slam, whatever. And there is Body Slam. This time it does find the power on the Heatran. Going to protect for lefties, why not? Especially when Heatran does not have lefties, it's just a strictly advantageous turn for Jirachi. And the back poke is Rhyperior, coming in on a full para, which is ideal. However, he's going to both overpredict and miss with Megahorn. And he goes for it again. It does only 16% with those resistances. Uh, yeah, like I said, just an overprediction, just clearly targeting something other than the Heatran. That did not work out well for Johnny. Uh, obviously, had he just stayed in and clicked EQ, he would have killed the Heatran there. But it's obviously easy to say... Hindsight 2020, if he EQs and then Lati or Zapdos comes in, it's not so good. Uh, he made a judgment call and didn't get there, and he was really punished for it in this case. The Heatran that was low and paralyzed and managed to trade with Rhyperior, which is not where you want to be. And that's going to leave us in a 5-4, to four, which is far from insurmountable in DPP. But you've got to feel like Tony's ahead right now. Zapdos comes into the loom, Seed Bomb resisted, just 17%, not a big deal. Zapdos can roost that damage away if he so chooses. T-Tower revealed for the first time for Tony, and there is the roost on the switch. 
Titar, as we see, is not gaining leftovers. There's the withdraw and the pursuit. Even with the bonus, it only does 27%, so not the world's most exciting pursuit. Bulky Zapdos for sure. And we end up with Zap on Loom. In this case, Zapdos coming in on rocks and being down to about half health. But again, can just click Roost here. Not a lot Bree Loom can do. It is Roost, of course, and Latias reappears for Tony. Still one unrevealed in this game that also belongs to Tony. Hippowdon coming in. Trick, Choice Scarf, and Lefties, sure. So Lati no longer dying to that sand. Back to Loom. And back to Rachi, which obviously can't paralyze it with Body Slam since it is already poisoned, self-inflicted. Wish. He'll always survive superpower if it doesn't crit, which it does not. And now he's got the option to protect and keep that for himself, or he could try to pass it. He'll probably just keep it. And it is a whiffed protect, which Tony takes advantage of by switching to his own Rachi. That was his previously unrevealed last poke. Full teams now known for both guys. CM and a critical hit body slam, but not a paralysis off body slam. And Tony going aggro with hidden power here. Johnny now needs para, or he's got a problem, and he does find it. He's going to protect for lefties, sure, but still very much in range to where he would die from hidden power. Likely still is here, and switches up to Clefable. Hidden power a lot less exciting against that, does just 20%. And now Loom comes in, hitting rocks in the meantime. Knock off there, getting rid of the orb, really doesn't matter. Already got what he wanted out of it. And back to Lati we go with those stolen lefties. Finds himself a Zapdos on the other side. Lati is faster, says the Sand, but he's going to opt for Healing Wish, passing that to his own Zapdos. And Johnny went for Secret Power, giving it a go here. Just 16%, not going to get it done. Here comes Hippowdon, who's stuck with that Choice Scarf. And it's going to be Loom coming into it. Back to Zapdos, perhaps anticipating a switch. We end up Zap on Zap yet again. They're at comparable health here. About half for both of them. Tony's, however, is the faster Zapdos, which is going to prompt Johnny out. And Thunderbolt going to blink on Hippo, but he's not getting lefties anymore. So every time he comes in on hazards, it all adds up. Though, of course, he's going to have slack off somewhere in the back. But he has to wake up in order to do that. Thunderbolt there sniping Zapdos, making it harder for Johnny. Tony regains the Mons lead now at 4-3. to three. Tony playing aggressively, going for Thunderbolts into Rachi. Got a Thunderbolt again, and the Hippo reappears. I don't believe it's killed any sleep turns. It has killed one, my mistake. And there is the second sleep turn killed. Breloom we know has Seed Bomb. And there it is. And the Hippo never wakes from its nap. The Spore is too strong. Hippo out of here. And Johnny down to just two pokes. Tony looking good to take game one here. Jirachi reappears. Rachi on Rachi action. Iron Head, sure. Damage not very exciting. But the Power Flinch is so real in this gen. And he does not manage to prevent a move there. Tony does get the Calm Mind off. But he's going to try to power flinch him again. And it fails again. Which He's got a 60% uh, flinch possibility. And then additionally he has a power possibility. So it's actually more likely that he doesn't move than he does. But two turns in a row Tony actually did get his move off. S-Toss coming down on Breloom. Still got that poison heal. So pretty healthy. Super power. Goodbye Clefable. And it is only the Jirachi for Johnny, which I don't think can get it done. His prerogative to play it out, but it very much looks like game one is going to go Tony's way. He fodders off Zapdos here. Move would have been Iron Head for Johnny. And again, we end up with Rachi on Rachi. And again, we attempt to para flinch, which this time he does. Goes for it again. Gets him again. But the damage is not too heavy here. 14% or so a whack. This one, 13%, but third flinch. Slowly but surely, I suppose. Make that four flinches in a row. Because this is good for the game and skill-intensive Pokemon. 
This time, fifth time's the charm. He gets a calm mind off. Goes for it again. And yet another flinch. Again, good for the game. Not cheesy. Very skill intensive. All that. Hidden power 45%, but Tony's Rachi dipping pretty low. Iron head again. And a flinch again. May or may not survive another one, depending on the damage roll, and the answer is he does not survive. Is Johnny actually going to win this game? Can Tony just not beat the Rachi? Certainly Spore is going to be difficult. There's nothing he could do to prevent that. He's going to go to sleep. Nope, he's going to just flinch him. Can't Spore me if you flinch. Mock Punch and Death. Man, Jirachi versus the world. And apparently in this tier, Jirachi wins. Uh, Johnny looking good to take this one somehow. He's been seemingly behind all game, but his Jirachi loves him and just always flinches. And there it is again. There you go. I thought Tony was going to win. As it turns out, Jirachi is going to win. It comes all the way back for Johnny after a bazillion flinches. I don't know why Ironhead Rachi isn't banned in DPP, but it is busted and it wins the game. Johnny, the expected winner according to our predictions, does indeed take game one. See if Tony can get two in a row off to get packs on stacks off to the lead in this series, or if Johnny can close the deal and get the Sprinkles fan club out to the advantage in the first match of this series. Here is game two, but before we begin that, let me just remind you to please hit the like button if you enjoy the tournament, hit the subscribe button if you enjoy my content generally speaking, and more importantly, please consider donating to the tour. We got a fantastic donation earlier today. $200 was donated by an anonymous user, a very generous anonymous user, and that makes a massive difference in the prize pool it motivates me and gets me enthused to do these narrations it motivates the players it's really really good for the tour you don't have to donate 200 dollars, but if you have any amount five dollars ten dollars whatever you could spare it all goes to the players all goes to the prize pool please consider donating you can do that by joining the discord server and simply clicking the donation link it's fast it's easy and i don't keep anything so thank you for considering doing that Let's move on to game two. Johnny's on the bottom again. Tony's on the top again. Different leads. They both had Zap last time. This time they've got a Roserade and a Flygon. And it's going to be a turn one U-turn and Sleep Powder respectively. Lati being the thing. Getting hit with Sleep Powder. But it does have Sleep Talk. And he finds Draco Meteor in his sleep. Which does 40% to Rachi. Who we see does have lefties. And a little bit of switching later, Roserade is dead to a Fire Punch. Advantage Tony in the early going as they both establish rocks. Lati reappears, and that gets immediately Ice Punched. Will not survive another. It doesn't have lefties either. But Tony willing to stay in anyway. And looks like it was a good call for Johnny to get out of the way because he once again finds Draco Meteor in his sleep. And Jirachi, who's had to absorb two of those, is kind of low for Johnny. He also doesn't find the Body Slam Para on the switch, therefore has to get out of the way. Tony going for the throat with Overheat, going to do 42% to Tar despite resistance. But there's DD. So Johnny now trying to turn the tides and go aggro. Crunch is going to kill Lati. 5-5 five five game. Flygon reappears. That was the lead poke for Tony. Possible U-turn here. Nope. Straight for EQ. Blanking on a previously unrevealed Gengar in the back for Johnny. Opportunity here. Going to sub on the switch. See what he wants to do. Jirachi might just be a Will-O-Wisp. You could also just Shadow Ball him. He does just go for the attack. Shadow Ball, of course, being special rather than physical in this gen. So it's very deadly on Gengar. Out of the way he goes after the Shadow Ball. And Tony doesn't like it either. And they both end up switching on this turn. Unrevealed's in the back for both players here. Titar coming in. And that's going to absorb the sleep. But it's going to immediately lum that away. We know it's a DD Tar. Mock Punch obviously going to get him there. 4x weak. So Tony retakes the lead. 5-4. to four. Still a hidden poke in the back for both guys. Gengar going to make a move here. Tony can't touch it. Pain Split going to get him up a little bit. But crucially, 
Jirachi now in range to always die from Shadow Ball. However, Johnny is going to overpredict and go for Focus Blast, and he's going to miss. He will lose the Gengar for that overprediction, and now Tony even further in the lead at 5 to 3. Body Slam going to paralyze Pert. Ice Punch 9% is whatever. He was hoping for a switch or a freeze and got neither. He's going to Ice Punch again and still do poor damage and still not freeze anything. They're going back and forth. Finally, he does EQ and Tony gives up the Rachi. But Tony's still clearly in command of this game. Loom here representing Seed Bomb, which would obviously kill the Pert. And it's going to be Latius eating the Seed Bomb instead. 29%. Rachi comes into rocks, and Tony on top of that knows it's coming, gets the Heatran in at the same time, and Johnny desperate, he's going to try to flinch him down, but the flinch does not come, and Rachi melted by Flamethrower. Leaves us with just two pokes for Johnny against four from Tony, including an unrevealed in the back. Full para at a bad time for Swampert, second Flamethrower takes him out. Lati, the only thing standing for Johnny. Draco Meteor, for lack of anything better to do, would have needed a crit to get that kill. One Flamethrower later, with the help of the Sand, and Tony has evened us up at a game a pop. Game 3 is on the way, and like I said, I think it is crucial, more so for Johnny, that he gets this win, or it is going to be quite difficult for the Sprinkles fan club to defeat Packs on Stacks. Tony looking to give his teammates that cushion. Johnny in what many might view as a must-win game. And like I said, he is the favorite according to our predictions. Which is another thing you could do if you join the Discord server. You could predict who you think is going to win all these matches. Let's get to game three. It's cute that they have the same avatar, by the way. I think that's adorable. Go ahead and switch those sides for continuity. Johnny on the bottom, Tony on the top. As Elf, immediate boom. Fuck T-Wave, fuck Rocks, just gonna boom. It would have been a body slam for Tony there, but didn't have a target. Rocks coming down now via the Heatran, and Blissey establishes Rocks as well. Pursuit on the way out, physical in this gen, 26%, and now Zapdos comes in on Rocks. Heatran coming back in for Johnny, and he's going to be discharged on. Terrible thing to be on the bad end of. Heatran does not have lefties of note. And he's going to go for Lava Plume. 19% and no burn as the Starmie comes in for Tony. Looks like a stall team for Tony. And an aggressive team for Johnny. So a contrast of styles in this one. Pursuit on Starmie on the way out. Physical and super effective is going to do a whole lot. 65%. However, Machamp... Faster than Scizor here is going to sub up and take the superpower. Now D-Punch is going to do a fuck ton since his defense is down. But he does get another superpower off despite confusion. Nevertheless, Scizor very low and now out of the way as Kuhn comes in. Payback 32%. Decent chunk. And Zapdos comes in for Tony. Surf rather than Ice Beam there. Still with Stab, a decent chunk at 39%. Kuhn, of course, has to get out of the way. And we end up with Champ on Heatran as Tony again outpredicts and gets a step ahead of Johnny. Johnny feels the best course of action at this point is to boom. He takes them a Champ with him. And we've got ourselves a 5-4 to four lead for Tony. And both players have an unrevealed in the back. Rotom 37% T-Bolt there had a chance to crit or para full para. To put the Zapdos in real danger, neither one comes, and a couple of roosts later, he is healthy as a lamb. 95%. Discharge coming down. This time it does get the added effect para on Lati, which was the previously unrevealed last poke for Johnny. Wow. But through para, Draco Meteor crit kills Bliss. I'm surprised that even with a crit that that killed, that was a ton. 74%. I mean, it's got specs, but still, that is huge, huge damage. But fair enough. Blissey is down to a very timely, like I said, through the para, through the imperfect accuracy, a very timely crit for John. He makes this game a lot closer than it was a minute ago. I think I still like Tony's position, but it is much, much closer now. And Johnny going to play a trick with his Rotom, stealing lefties. And Starmie's down. Tony down to two pokes. Johnny now with the lead in this crucial game three. 
But Tony seems to be a big Breloom fan, bringing it once again. Seed Bomb and Hidden Power. But it's going to be Tony faster thanks to the paralysis. So Rotom is down. Now Kuhn is going to have to survive Seed Bomb. Or just be faster. That works. Ice Beam takes him down. So this is going to come down to a turn or two to get a crit or a freeze. He also has to avoid power, which he does. So he's got a one-turn window here. Crit or freeze for the win. And he gets neither. This one is going to be very close. The closest of the three. But it is going to be Tony taking it down. Like I said, Johnny had a two-turn window there with the ice beam to crit or freeze. Had to avoid getting paralyzed by discharge, of course, in the meantime. But he did not manage to find the crit or the freeze. Tony hangs on barely with his Zapdos. And it's going to be Tony getting the match win two games to one. Johnny now 0-2 as an individual in this tournament. And crucially, that is the 1-0 series lead for Pax on Stacks with two matches that on paper are favorable for them to go. So this would be one hell of a comeback if the Sprinkles fan club were to pull it off and stay in this tournament. I have no clue how that plays out. This is being narrated the same day that it was played, so those matches have yet to be played in real time, but I'm very much looking forward to them. In the meantime, if you've enjoyed the content, like I said, please do hit that like button, and I will see you guys in the next video.